Hello and welcome to Smart Karma's corporate webinar. I'm Sanam Nanwani from Smart Karma, and this week we are hosting Hyphen's Pharma. We are glad to have with us Chairman and CEO, Mr. Lim Siwa. We will start the webinar with Mr. Lim walking us through a company presentation, after which he will engage in a fireside chat with Smart Karma Insight provider, Tina Banerjee. We are taking live q and &E, so I would like to request our attendees to post your questions in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. During the webinar, I will also share some links on how you can connect with Hyphen's Pharma and read more research by Tina. So please do keep a lookout for messages in the chat box. I now hand it over to Mr. Lim to walk us through a short company presentation. Mr. Lim, please. Thank you very much, Sanam, for hosting me today. And uh, thank you to all the audience who are joining us. Uh, I'm dressed the way I'm dressing because I'm seated now in uh, Jakarta and I'm attending an uh, office function today. Okay, so I hope all of you are able to see this uh, uh, screen. And the title over here is Hyphens Pharma, Five Reasons to Own. So in, instead of the, doing a general overview of the company, I think uh, we can explain a little bit about the company and highlight why is it interesting to own Hyphens. So Hyphen is Singapore's leading specialty pharmaceutical and consumer healthcare group uh, that has an operation directly in five countries across the Southeast Asia difference. So I wanted to highlight to you what makes Hyphen's difference. The first reason why Hyphen is interesting is today, I think if you look at the Singapore-based uh, mid-sized pharmaceutical company, there are very few companies that has direct access uh, to the five countries in the Southeast Asia region. If you look at our presentation deck, you'll realize that we are first and foremost headquartered here in Singapore, uh, but we are also directly present in Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, as well as Indonesia. And in the longer term, our intention is really to become a leading ASEAN pharmaceutical and consumer healthcare group. And today, you know that we have an estimated population of 662 million people in the ASEAN region. Based on the five countries where Hyphen has got direct presence, we have an access to a market of roughly 450 million people. And this is very important because ASEAN is one of the fastest growing region in the world. And definitely in terms of the healthcare market, uh, as well as the growth of the healthcare market, ASEAN is one of the fastest growing region uh, in the world. And because of the slow base where we are coming from, it is anticipated that the healthcare, particularly the pharmaceutical market, is going to grow uh, significantly over the near term. So Hyphen is definitely well positioned to benefit from the higher health expenditure in the ASEAN countries, like I said, due to both economic growth as well as the aging population. The second reason why Hyphen is an interesting uh, business is because I think we have a very highly scalable business model. Like we have mentioned, we are present directly in the five countries um, Singapore, Malaysia, Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia. And when we say that we have got direct presence in this country, it means that we have our own medical reps operating in these countries together with the management team in place. In each of the country where we have got presence, we have our country managers, we have our product regulatory uh, people who is doing product registration, we have our marketing people, product management people, we have sales management, as well as medical rep. And in a number of countries, we have got both ethical team that is covering the hospital as well as the consumer healthcare team, including the digital marketing team. So what we see over here is that we have got the infrastructures that is ready and the business model that we are having includes looking for products for in-licensing, means that these are products that has already completed product development, we in-license them, or in some instances, 
We have product that is developed in-house. For example, our product, our food supplement, our skin health range that is actually developed in-house. Um, so certainly what you see over here is with the channel that is ready, we are able to pump product into the pipeline and therefore it is definitely a highly scalable business model. At the same time, you also see that uh, uh, people like myself, as well as the other two executive, uh, the, the other one executive director, as well as the other non-executive directors, non-executive, non-independent directors, collectively holds more than 70% of the shares in the business. So clearly, there is a strong alignment between the management and the shareholding. And, and at the same time, we are supported by a very experienced management uh, team. Third, and I think this is probably a very exciting news. There's quite a bit of coverage about this news recently in the last couple of days. Uh, we are very happy to announce uh, that DocMed, which is a fully owned subsidiary of Hyphens uh, Pharma International Limited, uh, has actually raised uh, in a Series A funding a $6 million um, investment by a fully owned subsidiary of Metro Holdings uh, Limited. And this is very important and exciting because DocMed is an integrated health tech platform incorporating various healthcare, health tech solution to cater to healthcare stakeholders in Singapore as well as in the Asia Pacific region. And all of you are definitely aware of the fact that with the recent COVID crisis in particular, there is a significant shift in both sentiment of the patient as well as healthcare services provider, recognizing the importance of technology in aiding healthcare service delivery. And so the entire healthcare sectors when it comes to digital uh, represents future opportunities waiting uh, for, for companies developing innovative solutions to come in and unlock value. So this is definitely interesting and exciting news for us. Uh, the fact that we have been able to get and we are very grateful for Metro Holdings uh, for this investment, uh, for the confidence in Hyphen's experience in the area of uh, pharmaceuticals, as well as the prospect of DocMed in unlocking values uh, in, through the development of health tech platform and a deployment of health tech solution. Uh, a, a bright future awaits these ventures. For Hyphen's, this investment also represents an opportunity to unlock value of the medical hypermart and digital segment of our business because you would have seen and read by, by some of the analysts saying that the investment by, doc, by, by Metro into DocMed uh, effectively values uh, DocMed technology at uh, $60 million in terms of valuation. And bearing in mind that today, um, the total uh, market cap of Hyphens today is less than, still less than 100 million. Many of the analysts are saying that, look, there, there is significant uh, uh, opportunities if you are looking from the valuation perspective of hyphens. Of course, what is also very important is we have got good products with very strong brands. I wouldn't be surprised that some of you uh, have actually seen uh, Saradan as a brand or some of you or your friends uh, may be user of Saradan itself. We have started uh, launching Saradan as the own brand product in 2011. And after 10 years, we have successfully established Saradan as a strongly endorsed uh, medical brand um, used by dermatologists as well as uh, pediatricians. Today, in Singapore, in Malaysia, in Vietnam, in Indonesia, many of the dermatologists as well as pediatricians are actually prescribing Saradan to their patients suffering from atopic dermatitis as a supportive treatment. And at the same time, what we are seeing here is that you can actually easily find a consumer range of Saradan in the major retail stores in Singapore, as well as in Malaysia. So you walk into Guardian, into Watson's, into Unity, 
uh, you they'll definitely be able to find Saraden on the shelf uh, in the pharmacy stores. And that is definitely exciting. What we are certainly doing is not only are we marketing uh, this range of products in the countries where we have direct operation, we are also actively looking for partners internationally. And some of you are aware of the fact that we have also had distributors in China, uh, in, as far as in Oman, and the process of looking for distributors uh, continue apace and we are hopeful that uh, in, the, in the future, we will have a broader international network of uh, partners who is going to commercialize uh, Saraden as a major uh, emollient brand uh, targeting patients who are having uh, eczema prone skin. Of course, the other very interesting and important brand that we have is TDF, uh, which is a, a, care, a range of professional uh, skin care. All right, that is used by aesthetic doctors as well as by dermatologists. Last but not least, I think hyphens is interesting because we have a steady track record uh, of business growth as well as dividend growth. We have been listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange uh, in 2018 and we are committed to maintain a dividend policy of paying at least 30% of its net profit attributable to shareholders subject to board approvals. In 2019, we have paid out one cent all right, because of a high cash flows that we have. Uh, subsequently, we are going back to our original intention of paying out a dividend of 30% of net profits. Um, last in 2020, we paid out 0 0.62 cents. In FY 2021, we paid out 0 0.67 cents. If you are looking at our revenue, our revenue has been growing. Right, it hit the high of 126 million in 2021. Uh, profit after tax hit the high of 6.8 million in 2021. Some of you may have noted our quarter one uh, business uh, uh, updates, and you'll see that our quarter one sales have grown by about 18.5 percent, and our profit after tax has grown by almost uh, 50 percent. Of course, this is just an interim. Uh, report uh, to watch out for our half year report uh, uh, at the second in should be announced in uh, in August. So with that, I hope I have been able to convince you right about the merits of owning hyphen shares as one of the leading pharmaceutical company and consumer healthcare group in Singapore that is quite unique uh, in its own way that has got network in. Uh, Southeast Asia. With that, thank you very much and I hope I give you a flavour of why Hyphen is an interesting counter and I leave it to Tina to moderate the rest of the discussion. Happy to answer questions that you have. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks. thanks a lot, Mr. Lim. So we have a few more questions to know about uh, Hyphen Pharma. So like first one, uh, if you can walk us uh, through on the overall market opportunities for specialty pharma distribution in ASEAN and your market positioning and reach, and how much competition you face from other distributors and drug companies' uh, direct marketing presence in that region? Okay. Now, I, I think if you are looking at ASEAN um, as a region, I mentioned earlier on 600 over million uh, people. And if you are looking at the per capita consumption of pharmaceuticals, you'll know that generally speaking, ASEAN's per capita consumption of pharmaceuticals remain relatively low. I think the country that has got the highest per capita consumption of pharmaceutical is Singapore, way above the rest. Right? I think this is a first very important point. And definitely what you see is every country every per people, the natural aspiration is to take care of healthcare. For example, if you are looking at Indonesia, Indonesia has implemented the National Health Insurance Scheme, they call BPGS, uh, started since 2014, completed national rollout in 2019, uh, and it's definitely growing apace. And what you also see is in many of these countries, uh, including Indonesia, if you are looking at Malaysia, including looking at Vietnam, 
many of these countries uh, continue to have a lot of scope uh, for healthcare capacity uh, development. So that is something that is very important because on the one hand, uh, definitely there is demand, right? And that demand is supported by economic growth. Yes, if right. there is demand and if there is no economic growth, mm -hmm. that is not very exciting no. because right. you know there is no consumption power. Yes. Yes. But the right. moment there is demand, there is mm -hmm. a growth of capacity. Mm -hmm. Plus, when there is economic growth, then resources becomes available either through the National Health Insurance Scheme or individual who has the means, mm -hmm. right? Who will actually either pay out of pockets or there will be private insurance that is coming in to support the overall market development. And I think that is the broad landscape that we are seeing today as far as ASEAN is concerned. And that is also the key reason that is underpinning the very healthy development of the pharmaceutical market in ASEAN over the last uh, decade. And we anticipate that the factor that is supporting the healthy pharmaceutical market development in the past will continue into, into the future. And so this is a, a major uh, landscape uh, as a backdrop where we are operating in that make us feel bullish that we are in the right place at the right time to participate in the market. Of course, what is interesting is Hyphens today has already the right infrastructures to tap into the market. While many people may think that pharmaceutical is an interesting market, it is actually a segment that has got high entry barrier. Right? A lot of licensing is required before yes. you can participate in the market. Yes. And when we are talking about licensing, we are not even talking just about product registration. Before even you are in a position to be able to file for product registration, you must have the right licensing as a company, employing people with the right qualification before we are even in a position to be able to file for product registration. Right. Once you have successful product registration, you need to have the right know-how, right? In terms of the professional know-how in saying, how are you going to be able to navigate the system, right? To be able to get access to the market, be it listing into the hospitals, listing into the pharmacy chain yes. or getting into some kind of national formulary or the reimbursement system. Hyphens having been operating in this market for more than two decades mm. has got the infrastructures that is already developed that enable us to participate in this market. Yeah, that's very helpful. So, uh, like uh, my next question is on a uh, Novem group. Like you have acquired the Novim Group, so how does that acquisition has benefited uh, Hyphens Pharma? We we have uh, acquired Novem Group uh, uh, towards the end of last year, hmm. right? Uh, Novem is a very well established uh, pharmaceutical distributor uh, in Singapore, um, and when we are looking at it. What is very interesting, obviously, is that Novem is able to complement uh, the business of hyphens in Singapore, right? Because a major part of Novem's business is actually addressed towards the public sector healthcare, right? Quite a big part of their business is actually done with public sector hospitals, whereas hyphens' uh, business in Singapore tends to have a higher representation in the private sector healthcare. Mm. So with that, what we see, do see over here is the addition of hyphens, uh, addition of Novem into the hyphens group enable hyphens to capture the entire value chain, all right, both the public sector as well as the uh, private sectors. And going ahead, we anticipate that uh, because of the aging uh, uh, society in Singapore as well as the government stepping up uh, of uh, expenditure in healthcare, we anticipate that the government sector is going to continue to grow uh, in significance and maybe in terms of proportion of the total healthcare sector. So by having Novem, we are positioning ourselves for that scenario to be playing out. 
for some of you, you may want to also take notes uh, that actually uh, uh, Novem is a good company. Uh, in quarter one this year, they have contributed to about $3.5 million in top line sales okay. uh, to the group. Right? And with the Novem's uh, contribution, not only did our group grow for quarter one by 18.5%, now I said our total uh, net profit grown by almost 50%. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my next question is like, you have recently partnered uh, for some biosimilar products. So can you please explain the rationale for such deal? And uh, what is the expected timeline for commercialization of that biosimilar? <laughs> Um, maybe just let me explain a little bit about what is biosimilar. Yeah. Right? Today in the world of pharmaceuticals, right, what is interesting is the development of uh, big molecule drug, the big protein uh, drugs. We call them the biologics. Yeah. And whereas there are a lot of biologics that has been developed for oncological purposes, right, in the last 10 years, or more than 10 years, there has been an, a streams of new biologics that is targeting uh, inflammatory and autoimmune diseases. Right? Uh, a very interesting condition, a very important condition uh, that has benefited from the new innovation in biologic is this skin condition called psoriasis. Psoriasis is a, is, is a very serious condition uh, that severely uh, impact patients' quality of life, particularly patients who have severe condition, mm -hmm. right? because it is very visible and sometimes it's very distressing for patients. Mm -hmm. um, a number of different biologic has been developed to very successfully manage this condition so that the patient's disease condition can be very effectively controlled um, that has a significant improvement in their quality of life. Now, of course, with the originator drug, uh, once the pattern is over, it is possible for people to develop um, a similar drug as the originator. Yes. But whereas in, this, in the era of chemical molecule, we call a similar product a generic drugs. Right. But in this case of biologics, because it is produced by cell, right, by, by the cellular mechanism, mm -hmm. rather by chemical synthesis, the substances are unlikely to be exactly identical. So right. we call them biosimilar rather than generic. Right. And because they are not an exact identical, right, the process of ensuring that they are performing very similar to the originator, is more complex and they need to go through clinical trials and phase three clinical studies and so on and so forth. Yes. So that is the background as far as biosimilar is concerned. Hmm. So obviously you realize that biologics are very interesting because it is very efficacious. At the same time, it has also very high values. Right. The development of biologic has been driving the growth of the pharmaceutical market in advanced economy. Because of the very high price, usage and utilization in ASEAN of some of these biologic remain very modest because of excess. Yeah. So Hyphen has a very strong focus in the area of dermatology. Mm -hmm. And at this moment in time, when the opportunity for us to license in a biosimilar, right, that has got very well proven efficacy, we jump on the opportunity. So this is actually a license and supply agreement. We license this uh, biosimilar that is developed by an Icelandic company, right, and uh, we deal with uh, 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 a master licensee of these companies for three countries. We, so we took Singapore, Malaysia, as well as Philippines. Okay. The originator drug is a drug uh, from uh, Johnson & Johnson right? Uh, that has a very big reported 
uh, sales value of almost uh, seven to eight billion US dollars. And when we are looking at it, we think it is interesting and exciting because uh, it will actually help hopefully to provide more access to patients who are suffering uh, from psoriasis to some of these very powerful products and leveraging on the network and access to the market that we already have, uh, we hope that we'll be able to, to, to support and provide uh, patients as well as doctors more options. Uh, the drug is currently still undergoing development uh, in Europe. Uh, it will take a while. We, we are going to anticipate uh, fouling only in 2025 and you will certainly take a little while before the product is approved and can be commercialized. But that is part and parcel of pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical yeah. is a long runway business. Yes, yes. So it is a long-term growth driver for you, uh, uh, like uh, my next question is, like in last uh, three years, we have seen increasing contribution from your uh, proprietary brands. So in next three to five years, are you seeing any major change in your revenue composition? And are you planning to launch any new product in that segment? I think proprietary brand has been a sector that we have uh, been uh, clearly uh, making consist significant as well as consistent investment into it. Uh, a brand that we have made, made major investment is actually uh, the Saraden Advanced, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because it's a product that uh, has a very novel, uh, uh, has got a novelty behind it in terms of its ability to sustainably reduce uh, skin pH, and we have got a patent granted uh, in UK uh, uh, initially, and since then we have the patent granted in, in uh, USA. That's a very recent thing as well as in Malaysia, uh, in Singapore, and many of the other jurisdictions as well as territories are still uh, pending uh, patent approval. So you'll see that it is something that is interesting and exciting because with the novel, uh, with the invention that is behind it, it ensures that we have certain exclusivity with regards to our ability to exploit a very important area, in, which is actually uh, for, for the skin pH lower. Now, having said that, uh, what we are also seeing is it is not just because it is patented that we are investing behind it, but what you realize is that because the brand is actually owned by us, the investment that we are putting in in developing the IP of the product translate not only into sales and profitability immediately, but when we are able to grow the sales value of the brand, when the brand equity grow, the value of that asset actually go. You'll realize that in the area of pharmaceutical, sometimes companies sell product. Sometimes we are also looking out actively for opportunity to buy product. And if you were to look at some of hmm. look at the multiples uh, of the sales uh, value of the product. Hmm. So we are certainly interested in further developing and investing into proprietary brand because we can unlock value twofold. One is in terms of the immediate profitability, but what is more important is the brand equity that you are building behind it, leading to long-term accumulation of the intangible uh, assets that you have. But having said that, what we are also clear is we don't have a, a, a obsession in saying that we must grow the percentage contribution of the proprietary brand business per se, because we have three different business segments today. There are different opportunities that is coming up and each and every of these opportunity is an important opportunity. For example, with the investment uh, into DocMed technology, as well as the fund that we have just received, we are certainly going to further develop this segment of the business. And who knows, right? Uh, what is going to come up in terms of the percentage contribution by each of these segments. And I wouldn't be surprised that the, the proprietary segment contribution as a percentage may 
may drop just because the other segment is going to grow faster. So I hope I'm going to be able to share with you this perspective in saying that we will pursue all the growth opportunity that is available while the investment behind the proprietary brand will be consistent uh, and we are hoping to be able to uh, capture long-term value because of this decision to continue and consistently invest behind our proprietary brand business. Okay, got it. So let's talk about some uh, business recovery post Omicron and uh, elective surgery trend. So how is the demand currently and uh, what is your take for the current year? I, I, I would say that it is definitely a good thing uh, that uh, that we are moving to a new phase of living uh, with, with COVID. <clears throat> I'm in Jakarta, uh, and the good thing is uh, there's a lot of traffic jam. And, you know, that is good news because that means uh, life yes. is returning. Yes, right. Right, normalcy is returning. And yes. uh, talking to my team, um, understanding that uh, while hospitals are not yet operating at full capacity, uh, definitely there are a lot more patients returning uh, to hospitals, either elective, for diagnostic, uh, for treatment, and so on and so forth. And I think this is also true in Singapore. I think medical tourism is returning. Right? We are seeing, uh, well, I, I, of course, I don't have access to what the Mao Yi and the rest are seeing you know, in terms of foreign patients, but the walking in uh, Mao Yi uh, and the light, you actually hear a lot of different languages being spoken, telling you that the medical tourists are coming back. Uh, so those are, I think, definitely good thing. And we anticipate uh, that having uh, the opening is going to lead to an increase uh, in demand of some of the hospital-based products that we are having. Okay, uh, that's helpful. And uh, if you are seeing any uh, impact of current inflationary pressure on your business? Definitely, definitely. I, I think we are in the world today whereby no one is able to escape uh, the inflationary pressure. It is just to what extent uh, the inflationary pressure is going to be able to hit uh, and country to country, it is different. Uh, inflationary pressure is coming through in a few forms. One is in the context of higher freight costs. Uh, that is definitely the case. In some instances, uh, it is also that the supply price is going to go up. Right, the supply price has got to go up because raw material cost is going up. Right, that is definitely an important uh, factor that is going to uh, lead to a situation where our landed cost of goods is going to go up. But having said that, some of these factors are being mitigated uh, because some of the uh, purchase currency is weakening against the sing dollars. The sing dollar has been strengthening quite a bit, right? So it, it sort of mitigates a little bit, although not completely. The other inflationary pressure that we are wary of is the, that it may lead to an overall increase uh, in operating expense. Uh, our utility bill is definitely going up, right? Because the, the cost of uh, energy is going up a lot. Right, uh, wage costs uh, is anticipated to go up, and that is uh, that is going to lead to again an overall increase in our operating expense. So those are factors that is likely to be uh, coming in. Okay, so like uh, you are uh, predominantly focusing on uh, dharma. So, do you have any plan for focusing on any other therapeutic area or uh, and any rational for focusing on Dharma? Okay. Um, I, I would want to correct uh, any misconception that we are focusing only on dermatology. Obviously, we have a lot of focus on dermatology in terms of our own brand development. As a relatively small company, 
it is not viable for us to dabble in different therapeutic groups. So it has been very clear if we are going to invest resources uh, into development of product, at this moment, the choice is in dermatology. At the same time, because of our strong portfolio presence in the area of Seraten as well as in TDF, mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we see an opportunity because uh, when it comes to competition, there, there aren't too many very, very big organizations with very sophisticated product already occupying a dominant position in this segment. So we think when we are coming inside here, we have an opportunity to have a seat on the table. So there's a decision why we are focusing our resources uh, in terms of development of product as well as trying to enhance our market position uh, in these sectors. Now, but having said that, in the area of specialty pharmaceutical segment, we have strong presence in the other therapeutic segment. For example, we have got very strong presence with ENT. Right? We are also active uh, uh, with doctors caring after patients who are suffering from uh, conditions such as osteoarthritis, meaning that we cover, uh, we cover uh, orthopedic, we cover uh, rheumatologists, Right, and uh, because of bone and skeletal health, we are also covering some of the endocrinologists. Uh, we have got presence uh, in Vietnam as well as in Indonesia, uh, covering the radiologists. Right, so it gives you a, a, a good sense that we are not just present in uh, dermatology. And in these other regards, we are also actively pursuing opportunity to in-license product in other therapeutic areas. Okay. Yeah. So now uh, come to your uh, e-pharmacy initiative. So do you think the pandemic-driven boom in uh, telemedicine will continue? And uh, how competitive is the space currently? <laughs> And uh, can you share a bit more about your uh, digitalization initiative? You have talked a little about your presentation, but uh, still we want to know uh, more on this. Sure. I, I think there is no question. Uh, even today, sitting down with some doctors, they were telling me, okay, during uh, uh, COVID time, mm -hmm. right, uh, they are doing a lot of telemedicine. Uh, now that we are moving towards the endemic phase, patients would prefer to see them face-to-face -face, and the use of telemedicine uh, has actually dropped. Right? Uh, so, and that is normal. Uh, that is completely normal and to be expected because in most instances, right, patients as well as doctors would prefer to see each other in person. But having said that, I think what is also very important is when we are looking at telemedicine as well as the use of technology right, uh, in, in medicine, it has never intended to replace face-to-face -face interaction between patients and doctors. What we are talking about is the use of technology, including teleconsultation, should be a kind of supplementation, right? With the hope that at the end of the day, overall healthcare service delivery efficiency and productivity is going to increase. And there are specific instances and examples where teleconsultation is going to be uh, more effective in that sense, right? And at the same time, what we see here is the use of technology in healthcare is not limited to just telemedicine. Mm -hmm. If you are looking at the digital health record, mm -hmm. if you are seeing how uh, digital diagnostic can be deployed today, mm -hmm. right? Uh, algorithms, how doctors and doctors can actually co-manage patients when they are remotely through better use of telecommunication technology and network. I think those are all the opportunity that is going to be available. What is very interesting is obviously in the context of uh, what we have is 
we have a business called Well Away E Pharmacy. And Well Away E Pharmacy has obtained a license from the Health Science Authority in January 2021, right, to operate as an e pharmacy. And what it means over here is a doctor can actually make use of the e prescription system that we have developed to prescribe a medicine for his patients, right? And with the prescription that we receive securely from accredited doctors, well away will actually prepare the medicine and dispense the medicine to a patient, just like any pharmacy, except that in this case, the pharmacy is not standing in front of the counter. The patient is actually at home. And so we need to ensure that the medicine is packed properly and delivered securely to the right patient, followed by some kind of uh, follow-up by our pharmacists or our pharmacy technician to counsel the patient. Mm -hmm. And so since some of this service has already been developed, one of the very exciting things that has come about is, you know, we have actually made an announcement. We are supporting SATA, who is providing teleconsultation services for some of our, our uh, workers. All right, residing in dormitories. So we are actually the ones supporting the uh, uh, medication delivery, this telepharmacy service to ensure that the medicine reaches uh, the patients where so when needed after they have consulted with the doctors. So this is a real-life utilization case of well away pharmacy. So DocMed has been formed as a, as a company to further develop digital asset that we already have. And this digital asset includes well away e-pharmacy, as well as the very well-established B2B e-commerce portal that enable a clinic to securely order products from Pan Malayan, which will be extended to other uh, vendors in time to come. Mm. Right? And so this is a very exciting platform that we have. At the same time, we are also intending to develop other digital tools right, that will enable doctors to securely communicate with one another as well as connection between doctors as a community. Okay. So this is how we anticipate the fund that has been uh, invested by Metro into DocMed will be used to further develop the digital asset that we already have in Singapore as well as regionalizing this asset into the other countries uh, in the region. And we think this is a very interesting and exciting opportunity because there are not many players in this particular areas all right, to, to provide healthcare workers all right, with the technology as well as the network effect to enhance patient outcome. Okay, uh, so we don't have any more questions now. So thank you, Mr. Lim, a lot for taking your time. And I think uh, investors have understood that Hyphens has a very good opportunity and it's a very attractive company. So over to you, Sanam. Thank you, Tina. Thank you. Thank you, Tina, for some very interesting questions. Also a big thanks to Mr. Lim for a detailed insight into Hyphens Pharma, the challenges in the healthcare sector and opportunities for Hyphens Pharma. I would also like to thank our attendees to join this, this session live and ask very relevant questions. With this, I would like to wrap up this week's corporate webinar. Thank you again and have a great week ahead, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Sanam and Smart Kama. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, all.